Hi, welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about iRules LX architecture. And you may be like, what in the world is iRules LX? And that is the new feature that we introduced in 12.1. And what LX stands for is language extension. And so our, this language extension that we're talking about is node.js. And so how does that play and how is it different from iRules? Well, if you remember from last week, the iRules architecture, iRules are self-contained within TMM, but that is not the case with iRules LX. And so let's just start drawing our data plane. So. Within the data plane, we have TMM, and on a dual processor system, you would have two TMMs, uh, so we'll call that TMM0 and TMM1. And then, uh, if you recall, if you looked at some of the ASM documentation or APM documentation, you have what we call a plug-in architecture. And what the plug-in architecture allows, uh, allows us to do is it allows us to reach out of band from TMM uh, to do other processes. So uh, things that APM and ASM need to do that we can't necessarily or, or choose not to do in TMM, it allows us uh, in a non-blocking way to reach out, uh, work on some stuff, and then bring it back into TMM. You recall TMM is a single threaded event loop. And so uh, this is kind of how the data, data plane looks for you know, all operations. But with Node.js, we actually live out here in the control plane. And when you build, so you have your workspace, and you build a plugin, an um, uh, iRules LX plugin, that will trigger within the daemons, we have the MCPD daemon, the Master Control Program daemon, uh, and you're familiar with that one, that, one's, that one controls everything, uh, config and, and whatnot. So MCPD will trigger uh, a process over to the Software Defined Module daemon, uh, which is the one that controls the Node.js processes. And so we have this, let's say, node zero and node one. And we have, you know, if we have two TMM, we can have uh, two node processes per uh, extension. So if you have three extensions within your ILX plugin, uh, you'll actually have three node processes uh, running for um, you know, each TMM. So you would end up with six node processes. But for simplicity, we'll, we'll show two. And so you have the Node.js process, and so within this plugin architecture, um, and then within Node, you have, so this is, you know, let's say, plugin zero and plugin one. And then over here, you've got lib uv zero and lib uv one, and these are actually how when we, when we get to the data, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but that's how these are going to talk. That's where the data is actually going to pass, is um, across this channel. Um, but before we get there, the, uh, the software defined uh, module daemon will spin up these node processes, and these will have a process ID. So let's say this PID is 1, and this PID is 2. And so those IDs will get communicated and they'll get communicated back to TMM. And so TMM will know how to communicate from the plugin architecture on, uh, as far as passing data back over to these node processes. So you've got some management traffic going on you know, above. So if we say kind of right below there and, and above here, you have a whole bunch of uh, you know, event channel traffic. Event channel is not really a thing. We'll just call it that. Um, and so you have all that traffic 
communicating this way and from when you've created your workspace or you're going to reload a plugin if you've updated it. All that traffic is being communicated, uh, the management traffic there, and then, you know, MCPD does its communication back and forth with SDMD, and then, you know, these spin up processes and uh, communicate that information back and forth. And so, you know, that's kind of the, the, the management side of this. And then the actual communication that happens from the, uh, the, uh, or the TMM's plugin architecture over to uh, the Node.js processes, this is the MPI channel, the message passing interface. And that is RPC uh, JSON communication. And the, uh, the max payload on this is 65K bits. So, you know, this is obviously not meant to be, you know, application building here. Uh, it's really more meant to be more application glue uh, between, you know, the, uh, you know, the server, the client, and, and the big IP. So there's a, there's a whole lot you can do with iRules LX. And, and in fact, we have a series going this week that goes into all the nuts and bolts of iRules LX. Um, but, you know, uh, because iRules LX lives in the control plane, obviously it's not going to be near as performant as, as what is going on in the data plane. So you have to be really careful what you use iRules LX for, and it, it should be a very um, compelling use case to use it. Uh, but, you know, as far as Node.js is concerned itself, it's very fast, and, and so we're not slowing that down at all. Um, but uh, because the control plane, uh, as far as a provisioning perspective, does not get too much memory allocated to it, all of this MPI channel uh, becomes, or it can become, uh, a memory constraint. And so you might have to reprovision some, uh, some memory uh, to your control plane, depending on what your use case is. So hopefully this has been a nice introduction, and uh, you know, we'll have more details in part four of the Getting Started uh, with iRolls LX series, and uh, we'll see you out there in the community.